Uh, we're going to go ahead and start now. Feel free if you want to look at you know, the different poster boards, walk around, and we'll just ask Stagnan to be quiet while you do that. But we will try and get started. We know it's evening. There's some youth there. I want to get that going on as quickly as possible. Does everybody here have an agenda or anything? Do they need one? Okay. Good evening. My name is Jessica Fugate. I am the City of City Field Deputy for Council Member Paul Krikorian. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, City of City Gymnasium meeting for the Prop Day Initiative for our, it's our third LBNOC meeting. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight to take uh, part in the release of all the design work that's been happening for the past couple of years. Um, I would like to introduce to you Neil Drucker, who is with the Bureau of Engineering. Thank you, Deputy. Good evening, my name is Neil Drucker. I'm the Proposition K Program Manager. Many of you met me at the first and second LVNOC meetings. Uh, for this project, which I admit were uh, a while ago. I do apologize for the delay of it. Hopefully the project design concepts that we're going to present tonight uh, have addressed your comments from the prior meetings and will you know, meet the needs of this community. I just want to remind everyone, and I'll say it a few times, so I apologize in advance for repeating myself. We do have sign-up sheets. Please make sure to sign in so you get notified on any future actions on the project, number one. Uh, two, if you want to speak uh, formally tonight during the public comment period again please fill out one of the speaker forms in the back and you can hand it to any of the city staff around Sean is over there in the blue uh, or Jessica over there in the corner and we will make sure you get a speak uh, we will ask that everyone respect uh, both city staff and the other commenters and speakers throughout the evening by not talking unless you're called upon uh, the LVNOC members will have a chance to speak and ask their questions first and then we will open up to public comment as shown in, in the agenda. A couple other things, you'll see some cameras, these are not city cameras. We are doing a voice recording, the city is doing a voice recording, but these cameras have been brought by the neighborhood council. Uh, if you want to not be on, first of all, just to let you know, as far as my understanding, they're not showing the audience at all, they're on the boards, this and the LV knock members. However, if you come up to speak and you don't want to be videotaped, please let me know or let us know as you come up and we'll ask that the camera be temporarily turned off so that you're not on camera. Uh, other than that, uh, I will ask that we hold our comments to three minutes. When we do have public comment, we will be timing them and we'll try and sort of wave our hands when you have about a minute left. So uh, with that, what I'd like to do is introduce or self-introduce the city staff that are here and then all the LVNOC members will introduce themselves. So Sean, why don't you start? Uh, my name is Sean Fan. I'm the project manager for this. I'm from uh, Bureau of Engineering Architectural Division. Rebecca? I'm Rebecca Avana. I'm senior project manager with the Bureau of Engineering Architectural Division. <coughs> Zora Akther, um, with the Bureau of Engineering Architectural Division, Architectural Associate, and I'm managing the view in the previous two meetings. Uh, hi, I'm Rick Fisher. I'm the Supervising Landscape Architect for the Bureau of Engineering Architectural Division. I'm Greg Moser. I'm a Landscape Architect on the project. Rick's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Miguel Morgan. I am an architectural intern at the Bureau of Engineering. And this beautiful model was made by Miguel. So. <laughs> Good intern. My name is Bob White. I'm the Recreation Supervisor for the City of Los Angeles Department of Recreation Parks. Okay. I'm Anna Mike, the Facility Director here at the City Recreation Center. Jeff is out of Cosmic Recordings, Deputy District Director. Thank you. I think we didn't miss any city staff, right? Okay. Now what I'd like to do is have the LVNOC introduce themselves. Uh, Bruce Thomas, LVNOC member and Park Advisory Board President. Uh, John Gallatin, uh, Park Advisory Board Vice President. Paul Matloff, Chairman of the LVNOC. Lisa Karajian, Studio City Neighborhood Council and LVNOC Volunteer Member. Beth Diamond, Studio City Residents Association. Thank you all. 
Uh, we'll have Sean start with the recap and uh, then well, we'll bring in city staff to do the update. The first thing I'd like to do is uh, we have the uh, meeting minutes number two, uh, the hard copies, and I would like to have the Ebinoff members uh, make a motion on that, whether or not you uh, need to approve the uh, meeting minutes number two. As chairperson, you can ask that we continue this to the, the actual approval to the end. Yeah, sure. You can, why don't you make that? We're sorry, I'd like to move that. I'm sorry? You want to make a motion for it? Okay, so you want to make a motion, I'll second it? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Move that we'll hold off till the end okay. to okay. approve these because it's going to take up too much. Okay, great. Uh, and I know the, uh, just, you know, as a quick um, summaries of what happened in the second LV knock meetings, uh, we presented uh, several alternatives uh, uh, for the project, and I believe that the, uh, with the approval of the LVNOC members, we have selected alternative uh, number one. And with that, our designer has spent time um, over the past uh, several months uh, to further develop that. Uh, and with that, we have the model, and we have some presentation that we're going to go through and uh, show you guys that what we have done. Zora, go ahead. Um, and the same presentation you see on the boards are also on the PowerPoint. Uh, so we'll go into the first um, board. So um, um, to, re to recap, what are some of the things we looked into? Just the site analysis of uh, you know the existing trees that uh, we should be not touching, areas to consider, things that we needed to consider. Next slide, please. Um, just the community surrounding scale of, of, of the neighborhood is very important as we are adding a new building. What's existing uh, in the park, uh, we looked at that. Next. More existing site amenities um, to see what can be saved, what should need to be replaced. Sure. <clears throat> And um, so the, the, uh, this slide is uh, more about the, some images of some beautiful trees. You know, We're all inspired by all, all these mature trees that the site has. And it was very important for us to save as many of them as possible. So these are some of those uh, existing site photos. Next, please. So this is kind of something what we had presented on the first uh, LVNOC meeting uh, of approximate location, where would you like uh, the project uh, building to be? Um, and uh, based on that, um, the, the last option with some um, adjustment is what uh, approximate location that the community had picked. Uh, next. How much adjustment was it? I'm sorry? How much adjustment was there? Um, okay. Not much, because the sizes at the time of the building was not um, completely uh, zeroed in. You know, the programmatic spaces were not completely developed, but an approximate area. But it's, it's, a, it's a very minimal adjustment. If you, if you see, you will see that it only got improved. You're from the bottom? From the right. bottom left, yes. Uh, I'll show you exactly. Do you have an overall? Sure, I can. So this is what um, kind of what was. So these are the three options we proposed, and the community asked that uh, about this one. However, moving it further away is what the approximate location uh, the community preferred uh, the building location to be. So that, based on that, we went back um, and uh, started our um, our analysis of how should the building look. Uh, these are some of the analysis of you know uh, where uh, we needed to have more. Um, Kind of uh, park circulation, how to uh, maintain uh, a functional park while adding this building. Next uh, diagram. Some of the uh, you know possible uh, uh, community spaces that need to be created, uh, public spaces within the facility that uh, this uh, new design will uh, bring it bring on. Uh, views of the building versus viewing looking out from the building and the plaza. That was important. Something that we needed to think about. Next. <clears throat> 
uh, prevailing wind. Um, this project, um, as many of you may know, uh, will be uh, pursuing uh, LEED accreditation, which is um, uh, a leadership in, in energy and environmental design. Um, uh, it's a guideline that provides, that makes the uh, each facility very sustainable. It makes the facility, guarantees the facility to be water efficient, energy efficient, and uh, um, use local uh, resources and such. As well as this project will be a net zero project. What that ultimately means is the facility will have enough renewable energy being produced that's needed for the entire time of the year. So we will have enough solar panel on site to run, uh, to produce enough uh, um, uh, energy for the rest of the year, for, for one year time period. So we, it was very important for us to look into, therefore, efficiency, energy efficiency, to maximize on natural ventilation, to maximize on avoiding direct sunlight to for heat gain. These are some of the things that were very important, and those are the things that uh, uh, levels of analysis that we had to go through before we could actually propose a, a facility, a building. Uh, we're not taking any questions until they make the decisions. Next. So based on that, this is uh, kind of the existing footprint of the build, um, a proposed fit footprint of the building um, came out to be, uh, where the large gymnasium is on the left and the community facility is on the right. Um, so uh, from our LVNOC presentation, it was established um, the, in terms of what are the uh, amenities that's going to be. The major amenities in this facility is a, is a high school size, full size gymnasium court, as well as a community room that can be divided up into uh, various sizes to um, facilitate um, uh, recreation and parks, um, uh, childcare uh, needs, as well as community classes and such. Uh, so we kept all of that in mind. So overall, diagrammatically, what happened is you have, a, have the um, the gymnasium building happening here and the community building happening here and there's the, this path that that connect uh, connects through the building if we can go to the next one so the parking footprint uh, remained overall uh, same uh, similar to where it is now it, it did get adjusted somewhat uh, so the uh, but the main idea was that the new building this is a plan of the new uh, new building uh, is the new building is set back away from the uh, from the Beeman Street and dry enough that the scale, the fact that the newer building is a, a larger size build, building uh, in square footage as well as height, it does not feel um, so dominant in your face. So it is uh, set back enough, and uh, and and the site is designed as such. I'll let Rick Fisher, the landscape architect, to talk a little bit uh, more about how we uh, proceeded to do that with the site design. Sure. <laughs> So the, the the existing features like you know the playground aren't going to be uh, modified. Go on the other side so they can see. I was I didn't want to block your view. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can accommodate both ideas here. So this is existing playground for reference. It doesn't really get changed at all. Um, the existing entry point is is basically the same. Although now the idea is it, it enters more at an, an angle into this sort of courtyard space that's created by the sort of L shape of the building. So this will be the, the primary uh, space of the building. It's designed so that it serves sort of as a, a gathering space with uh, some shaded seating whatnot. So it spills out from the uh, gymnasium and it connects through with the sort of view and breezeway from the field down below. Um, the sight lines from, from the building are very important so the Again, all things are oriented so that there's a view from the playground, a view through to the field, so that the building doesn't become a vis visual obstacle to record park staff to see what's going on. Um, the existing building we're in right now is it's in this area. So what happens by moving the building back? This this becomes sort of a, a, a big sort of front lawn for the for the facility. Uh, so it'll be a really nice open green space, sort of you know multiple. Casual use space. Um, again, as Zora said, the parking lot doesn't change too much. Um, it's modified a little bit to meet the fire department's access requirements and codes. So, from the playground going north, we have uh, another sort of turf area that's expanded so that connects to the playground to the ball fields. 
And then there's this uh, another outdoor seating area with shade that connects to the community room. So this again becomes kind of an indoor, outdoor kind of space. Um, you notice this feature here and some other things. That's basically the manifestation of the idea that all of the runoff on the site of, from rainwater, from the building, from the land, paving, is 100% of that gets captured and it gets uh, filtered into the ground. So the in practical terms, very, very little, if any, water will ever leave the site during a rainstorm. 100% goes into the ground, gets filtered through the ground, and ultimately benefits uh, the groundwater. The, uh, oh, the other thing was people were asking about the, the running track. The running track uh, comes along and it sort of becomes part of the north edge of the building pad paving, and then it re uh, begins again and goes around and does. There's a, a second picnic area here that's designed to, um, and uh, it'll actually be a little bit more shaded than it's shown here with the trees and such, but it's hard to see underneath there with the trees on. It'll also serve both the daycare co-op area and sort of the little league type functions and soccer field things. So lots of usable spaces for different activities around the, the building. So any questions on the landscape? I mean, I'm while saying. I'm saying. Okay. Hold on, Hold on question. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the turf area where the building sits now, is that, is that just going to be grass? Is that the idea? Yeah, it's just basically extending this existing lawn and it's going to extend up to the edge of the entry plaza. So it's a, it's a big front yard for the building. Continuing on John's theme with the, with the turf areas you're proposing, I know we just came out of a drought and we kind of still are. Um, are we going to upgrade the irrigation to facilitate having green grass? Because, I mean, our, our fields right now, it doesn't work. Within the footprint of the project we're working on, which is basically, you know, from here down, everything, all the irrigation systems are new. Um, the total, the total area of turf, remember that this area where the building is now proposed for is grass now. So we're actually reducing the total amount of turf within that footprint. Okay. I have a question regarding the plot. Memory tells me, A, that the building that was approved was oriented in the other direction that it was about 15 feet from the existing sand for the ring. It was going the other way, and it was substantially east of where it is now. Um, I remember the drawing attached to the number one that was approved was Um, Which one? Yes. So this had to be uh, in. Uh, Is this not the one that was in? That was not in. This was this the one. Was the one. So this uh, had so to be adjusted in terms of the parking layout and so it worked out better for the plaza because otherwise this plaza was becoming too constrained so it was being so close. Therefore, it made sense uh, having the building uh, situated so that we are not constrained by this street. Uh, this uh, community center was too close to the street. Therefore, having this move a little bit, this opened up this plaza being the major plaza. But this, so was, that's but this is not a minor adjustment. <laughs> Um, this, oh, this is not what, what was voted on, that's why I'm concerned. Yes. Um, I think uh, our understanding was uh, it was um, because it was uh, such a schematic uh, phase of the design oh, yes. that as design uh, develops, we will have the opportunity to adjust it. So the building did have to be adjusted somewhat because uh, initially the uh, the what uh, the question the LVNOC member had uh, was that uh, the initial the, uh, the the one that was approved this building was a little bit further this way, not as a setback. The reason for us to move that is there is a very mature tree that's here, and uh, initially the community uh, building was very adjacent to that. What we realized is what was that was doing is uh, breaking up this nice plaza and this view that was happening between the park and this main entry area. So it uh, felt like it will benefit the project a lot more, having a nice arrival plaza, something that uh, 
that connects to the playground and connects back to the, um, the ball field uh, a little easier. And that was the purpose. However, um, moving it back, although the building was set, moved back uh, uh, somewhat, we have taken care of this area um, with, with keeping in mind um, the visual um, attractiveness of that path and, and the uh, sense of security and uh, safe place. So we kept that in mind. So as we move forward, uh, we'll show you some renderings of that. I, I, I duly note that. Okay, let's go to the next. Did you uh, lose some of the parking? Um, no, we did not. We did, um, Excuse me. Could you speak up just a little bit? Otherwise, it will be sure. a saying. So if you address your house very nice, if you look over here so that we can deal with the question. That way we won't have to I wanted to know if by moving it, it uh, took away some of the parking. I'm sorry. Thank you. Did we not have the microphone last time? So, and, and, and where is it? Um, the parking was uh, something that the community uh, did not wish to have so much parking. They did not want to lose further more of space from this park. This is a community park, uh, somewhat, um, you know, uh, uh, could, you know, the amount of open space available to the community, did, uh, and it didn't make sense to us as well, and that was something uh, the community voiced as well, to uh, maintain uh, the current footprint of the parking. Therefore, the parking remained as the current footprint, and that allowed us for Has the parking variance already been obtained? Uh, we are in the process of getting the parking variance. I'm we're sorry. Not we're not doing questions. Sorry. We're going to have plenty of time at the end for question and answers, and we want to do that formally. Like I said before, or please do not call out from the audience. We will ask you to come up, formally state your name, and make a comment or ask your questions at the time. Thank you. So how close are we now to the daycare center? How many feet is there? Because of the height and the closeness to the daycare center, that We're about uh, 35 feet away from the daycare center, which is substantial, uh, really wide in our space. And then we have really uh, taken, um, created that as a uh, path that's really an active path, not a back of a building kind of an approach. Uh, we, we tried our best to make that connection. And, uh, there are always trade-offs, you know, by, by moving the building over a little bit, um, closer to the daycare center, we, we knew that there was a compromise there, but the gain was on the other side, it made a much more open- you need to stand up and talk to the oh, yeah. 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 yeah, all of us, please, city staff as well, please make sure you speak so everyone can hear. By, by moving the building over a little bit here, what, what, there may be a, a small compromise on this side, but the trade-off is it creates a much better uh, arrangement of sort of usable spaces on on the main active side of the of the area so this area we looked at it and it wasn't really serving any program function it wasn't serving a, a, a purpose and other than its community you know circulation space or whatever so we wanted to maximize the benefits of these areas so it, it made sense the building kind of move over that way and maximize the, the opportunity on the other side so that was the judgment that we made during that decision process Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, my fault. Okay, that's a zoomed in version. We can go into the next slide, please. So basically, that's the main view uh, that you see of the facility from um, Rye Street as you come in, and that large plaza that you mentioned. Um, so you can see how you know you really come in to walk into a really nice plaza that kind of very welcoming um, kind of an approach and this uh, view actually opens up to the rest of the park so the building doesn't necessarily serve as a divide dividing up the park so that was the idea so if we can go to the next um, so that that's uh, also another south view um, we just you know this is how the real view is uh, of the facility with the trees it's a very uh, um, buffered the building is buffered for, from the street uh, so it, you know it doesn't feel like a large building it, it, um, and, and such so uh, with trees and this is just we turned off the tree in this uh, rendering uh, this is a view of the plaza of the courtyard the large courtyard that's happening you can see in this um, model in this area so this is a view looking under from here so the idea was that it's a very uh, shaded space a comfortable space you would want to sit there you would want to have a small class there you, you could have you know um, events there and, and such next please 
that's a community room and that opens up to that larger the space uh, which was not as large before now it really opens up to this nice lawn area as well as picnic table area and uh, during uh, operation of, of child care center operation they could actually use a temporary fence to uh, fence out certain uh, spaces to use for the, for the child care function next so that's another view of the community room. And these are uh, walls that are uh, openable, and therefore the community room can actually become part of the ex into, uh, exterior space. Um, th these are wall uh, doors open up completely. Next, please. So that's a back view from the ball field. Um, and Ricky, you want to talk a little bit about the uh, concept of the trees? Really, the trees, the Again, we want to try to create a, a buffer between the ball field and the building and also to protect the building from the ball field. So there's a row of, be a row of large sort of stately trees along the, the edge of the building and between the ball field and the building. So uh, they basically will kind of go all the way across the, that edge and sort of define the ball field zone versus the rec center zone. If I can just ask a question on the landscaping of the trees. So. Unfortunately, knowing the city's past history of planting trees, which roots are too big for the area they're planted, and disrupting concrete and sidewalks, things like that, are these trees going to be narrow root based so they don't disrupt the area that they're going to be in? Well, the, the area is, is mostly grass and it's fairly wide, so um, there'll be plenty of room and the trees will be set far enough from the paving to where I don't anticipate a problem with that. Thank you. Next, please. This is just a, a quick slide on, you know, the fact that we are, um, you know, designing a very sustainable facility, a facility that uh, at certain time of the year will be cooled, uh, you know, um, will be naturally ventilated. So that's just a quick diagram for renewable energy strategy. So we are uh, cutting down uh, by having large overhangs, by having very efficient wall systems and such. We are cutting down on the amount of energy the facility may need. Um, and whatever is needed, we are uh, using you know, uh, solar panels on the roof system to produce that uh, energy. So that by the end of the year, within one year time period, the facility will not have a utility bill for electricity. So hopefully that, that will happen. Charlie, we also want to tell them this is going to be the first net zero building that the city is going to be built. So. So you're going to be first. In all of the LA? All of the city of Los Angeles. Yes. Wow. Not, not the first one in the whole city, the first city. City-owned building. <laughs> city-owned. There's a few other net zero buildings in the city. Yes. This would be the first city-owned. Yes. And, and a few, few um, you know, um, stormwater management uh, strategies that Rick mentioned that everything is um, ma managed on site. You wanted to emphasize on this a little more? Okay, we can move on. So just a little more um, landscape plan. You want to go into the palette? Uh, you can see the 3D view. Uh, we work closely with Redkin Park's staff. Can we go take over for <laughs> uh, On all the, the tree selection, all the trees are, you know, um, what we call climate appropriate. They're all size appropriate for the space and whatnot. Uh, they're all trees that are um, not uh, affected by the current spate of tree diseases that are running around, and if you've read some of the LA Times articles and whatnot. Um, many of the tree species are already, you know, here in the park already, so we we'll try to you know, kind of build on what's here whenever we can. Um, the, the shrub palette, again, is designed to kind of complement the, the building. It's basically all very, very low water use, very, very low maintenance, and robust enough to you know withstand the environment of the typical wreck and park kind of park we're ready to get the test is it you run on the test, edge of test, test the water test that's fine that's good good, is it good? Yeah. yeah sounds okay. the same to me all right now i can work can i one more maybe I'll... paving wise what if we go back Paving wise, um, it would be fairly simple paving palette, most a combination of natural concrete with a little bit of color introduced by um, concrete, you know, integral paving stones with some pattern that we haven't quite, you know, finalized yet, but that gets the general idea. The typical site furniture, of, well, bicycle racks, um, trash covers. We, rather than the traditional, what I call the Fred Flintstone, Wreck and Park style <laughs> picnic tables in the 
higher visibility areas near the community room, we're going to use a, a newer style steel round picnic tables because they're not uh, popular with the skateboarders for uh, skateboard tricks. Uh, in front of the in the front courtyard there, we've designed sort of a, a seating, modular seating system. So again, by creating these sort of segmented concrete sort of sitting edges that uh, that become part to skateboard and to meet the ADA requirements, some of them will have backs on them because that's required by law now. And that's again kind of an overview of the whole thing, 3D showing the existing and uh, proposed new trees towards you get the idea of masses? No. Yeah, I think. We'll stop okay. it. <laughs> um, just wanted to mention one uh, one thing about net zero uh, uh, was that uh, <clears throat> uh, just to uh, mention one uh, item about net zero. Um, as part of this facility being a net zero facility, the community will have the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to fill up uh, surveys um, for their uh, level, whether the facility meets their level of comfort or not. And this this is something uh, the project itself, uh, how much energy is being generated, and um, how is the facility doing in terms of energy efficiency and such. These will be all posted on the web for the public to see as well. And the facility itself will have information uh, about um, um, all of its um, sustainable uh, features. Um, for So this is going to be a living um, facility in a way. And um, you know, uh, there will be visitors, whenever visitors come, they are able to uh, look at, use, utilize those um, information and such. So um, the, the in involvement of the community with the building will continue at least for one year and that is part of the requirement of getting a net zero certification because once the building is completed from the day of occupancy to one year down that's a, that's a time period when we will certify the facility, certify the facility. So that will be the process in that end. Uh, we do um, the renderings that we have, the color, um, uh, what we have in the middle here is uh, just to wrap up um, our conversation. Uh, this is the, a model of, the, of uh, our project and on the other side is the color palette, you know, material palette as you can see, the boards uh, that's there that um, Jagmi worked so, uh, you know, cleanly and nicely on, on that uh, with us. So, you're welcome to come and take a look at them. Uh, we did um, um, propose the green color as the kind of the, one of the major color component for uh, the gymnasium building. Uh, however, uh, us ourselves have gone back and forth a few times with few co other colors. So these two boards are a green color. Those two boards are yellow option for you to look at. Uh, you will see one uh, red one down there um, that we also considered uh, in the process of selecting the final color. So we would like to hear your feedback on that as well. And I will hand this over you to you. Do you want to see this more closely? Or uh, do you want to see the material oh, board a bit more closely? Thank you. Yes. I'm going to give the mic to the LP chair. You're right over for quite a bit. Feedback from LP9. That's it. Can you start first? Yep. Okay. Here. <laughs> As part of the LVNOC, I uh, support what we're looking for. I mean, the park definitely needs a new building and gymnasium, which will support our basketball program, which has gone through the roof and not be so dependent on other schools in the area, which we're kind of at their whim to cancel games and practices at the last minute. So the project is definitely something I think that we need at the park here. Uh, I'm kind of sad that the walking track will be impacted um, as that is a nice feature we have. Um, the only thing that I would like to see is some of the extras that are not in here, which hopefully we can get, you know, an updated picnic area, which they proposed in the upper quadrant, seating area, things like that, little amenities at the park, I think that we need to improve, not just in the proposed project zone, but also throughout the park, and hopefully we can find some funds to do that. So I, I support this. Um, first, I want to I want to thank the city staff who put on the presentation and who did all the mock-ups and the rendering. Um, 
the, it looks great uh, to help us. Yes, so, I mean, for me, I couldn't necessarily picture what it looked like. But the renderings and the models really, really help, um, I think, bring it home. So thanks a lot for all the hard work I know you guys have put in in the last probably year since we've seen you last. <laughs> um, I'm also I'm, I'm proud to hear that we'd be the first city built to um, net zero building. I think that's an incredible accomplishment, something we should be proud of. And it really makes me think that, you know, we, I know we have a, a footprint now with this small building. The fact that we'd have a smaller environmental footprint on a bigger building with more amenities, I think is incredible. So a uh, job well done to you guys for designing that. Thanks. Thank you. Well said. I definitely approve this project. I think, uh, thank you for listening to us and to the community for what they were um, uh, asking for and incorporated into this design. It's absolutely, it, it, it is a good design and our, I'm really proud that Studio City is going to be getting this. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. I too support this. I think it's a fantastic project. I think you did a really great job with it. I appreciate the fact that you took the the community and the neighborhood and uh, the stakeholders into consideration in putting these meetings together so i thank you for that and uh, moving forward being a net zero um, building uh, within the year we would like to see that certification go through and uh, make sure that we keep the community involved in every step Thank you. I am a little bit concerned with the obtrusiveness of the building. It is substantially different in my mind than what was presented to us at the last meeting. It has moved, in my mind, it has reoriented. Um, I think we have to take that into consideration when we look at the elevation from the homeowner's standpoint, both Beeman and Rice Street. And I'd like the city to go back and, and review that and see what we can do about that. Can you ask what, what are you saying it's too high or what's, what's your concern? The, my concern is, is that I'm not sure we can do anything about the height. Yeah, but that's, I, that's what I'm trying the, to get clarification. The, the footprint was more buried, for lack of a better term, initially. It was okay. It, it was more easterly. There were tree, old trees. So this, your oh, what they're talking because they moved it a little bit into this kind of abandoned they unit moved, area. They moved it substantially. But isn't that moving it further away from the views of these houses here? I'm I'm really just um, talking in in general as to what was approved. My job is to kind of stay with what the community voted on. I'm just the trying last, to get clarification the last time as to what that's... we want to see change in the plan, that's all, in order to help that. Yeah, hold on, I, I, can't, I can't have questions from the audience at this point, but we'll do that after okay. the okay. okay. well, And to, it'll be again, to, it'll to be an, to, with a written comment. To answer your question, what was voted on is, in my mind, substantially different okay. than what we're being seen today. And I think we need to address it. Can I just give a little insight into the thinking process? I know when we went. Take the microphone so everyone can hear. Uh, or just come up behind me. Yeah. And talk. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to stand up there. Uh, when we were looking at, at how to fit the building on the site and create the you know the best sort of spaces around the building, I think um, it was decided fairly early on that. There was a big advantage in turning the gymnasium from parallel to the street to perpendicular to the street, which created uh, two benefits. One is it helped create that sort of L-shaped courtyard entry space and define it better, but it also presents a much smaller building elevation to the street by turning the building 90 degrees. And that was one of the, the driving factors behind our, our thinking on the reason why the building was turned any degrees. Also, um, uh, the city has uh, energy expert consultants and they did a lot of computer models on the buildings, orientations and things to help figure out which was the most energy efficient uh, orientation and things and that also fed into the, 
than thinking about the location of the building. So it wasn't done arbitrarily, but it was done for kind of some specific gains in those you know, areas. I will take questions now. Uh, Celeste, where is it? Just again, if you could come up to the front and take the microphone, please. Okay. And again, uh, just to remind everyone, we, you are being recorded, both video and audio. If you don't want to be audio recorded, please let us, or excuse me, video record, please let us know, and we'll ask that the video be turned off. Also, if you stand to correct with the model, that you won't be on this perfect. Thank you. I don't mind me. I'm the camera. So if you just say your name and then make a comment or ask Yes, uh, my name is Celeste Altamari. I'm an actual neighbor. We live about two blocks from the park, and we come up here often. And I just wanted to comment uh, to commend the city for investing in our green spaces and providing a net zero facility uh, for the community to use. I think the uh, families and all the people that live in the neighborhood um, want more green space in the city. And I think it's fantastic what we're doing, what the city's doing. Um, in addition, I'd like to ask a question. Um, first of all, the designs are fantastic. It seems like a lot of work went into this. And uh, I'd like to ask, what is the start date uh, for demolition and uh, construction, and when do you plan completion? So, uh, I think, uh, give me a few seconds, I gotta backtrack a little bit. Okay. I'll take your question. Thank you. Thank you. He's good. He's got it figured out. So he's, we have we have been working out a little bit different. So. The project, the fact that we're still short. so this question is from Joel Brightbent. Um, the question is: How big is the gym, and is having so many windows to subject to vandalism? To subject to vandalism. Yeah, we'll let Sarah answer that one. Uh, the gymnasium itself is uh, 7,000 plus square feet in um, that uh, uh, The gymnasium size, uh, we don't have that much um, control over the size of the gymnasium because it is a um, full size, um, uh, regulation size basketball uh, uh, gymnasium. Therefore, um, the size of the gymnasium is what um, uh, it requires it to be with, uh, with uh, walking aisles on the sides as well as some uh, possible bleacher area. Uh, it, um, so th that's approximately the size of the gymnasium is about 7,000 plus square feet. In terms of um, the glazing, these are, um, uh, um, these are uh, triple glaze, you know, uh, um, dual plane um, glazing um, that are uh, vandal resistant, um, and uh, there are uh, levels of um, of protection the, uh, the glazing will have. But given that it is uh, the neighborhood that it is in and uh, that where um, uh, the facility is. Uh, we felt um, this is uh, kind of the material, this facility, this uh, neighborhood will actually appreciate and, you know, um, will cherish. Therefore, uh, we did not feel, um, we felt um, it was um, sufficient. So, uh, next question is from Theresa May. What is the timeline from here? Have all the funds been raised? And what is the view from the existing co-op space? Yeah. And where's the main gym entrance? Why, why do we do it in a couple? Yeah, we'll start. And, and part of that question, Sean will answer. Yes. Uh, uh, with the sorry, earlier question. Why, I, I got to walk back the timeline and you know, uh, figure it out because I don't have it on my head. But we look at uh, assuming if we get the project endorsed you know, by the Avinoc members and the community, uh, we still have to go through uh, all the document prep preparation, the permit, uh, and get the approval from uh, Rick and Park and our clients. Uh, I'm looking at the construction start uh, sometime in winter of 2019. Do you, do you need any uh, as part of the document? Uh, the uh, environmental process is ongoing, and uh, that I need to ultimately our environmental group will determine uh, whether or not it is a CQSM or it's going to be an MND or EIR. So is the funding in place? 
the funding, we have funding in place, but the, this project is short for. So I have to work with the CAO and the council office to come up with the additional money for the project. Which is how much? Do you know offhand? Uh, offhand, I don't have the number right now, but I certainly, you know, we'll be more than happy to get back to you. But if all the funding is in place, the project is due to start. I'm still looking at winter. Winter of, yeah, 2019. 2019. That's okay. correct. So. Can we get an idea of where the main gym entrance would be? Yes, sure. Please. And the proximity to the co-op. So this is the main uh, entrance to uh, uh, to the gymnasium building through the lobby. Uh, in uh, Within the plaza area, we have this garage door type um, window system, door system that can open up and when, in that cases, you know, the gym facility can become part of the plaza uh, and that can be used together. Same with uh, the, in the back of the gymnasium, um, these uh, doors can be opened up and they could be used as indoor-outdoor spaces. And when these are closed, uh, the main entrance lobby is here, however, there's secondary entrance here and here, and um, with that can be accessed from the back as well. Okay. So uh, who is the park and facility really for? This is for my carrier. I think kids and families should be the priority, number one priority. Is the facility the right size for the park? It seems very large and visible. It will, it will change the down-to-earth feeling of the park. Um, I will take the second part of the question, which is the, you know, the, the down-to-earth part. We really tried um, and very hard to make sure that this building does not look like just any other gymnasium or rec center facilities out there. We really wanted it to have, you know, if you look at some of the renderings, you know, looking at the corner view, you know, the, this uh, idea of two buildings coming together, it, it does, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, the two heights remind you of, of a res could remind you a residential building. Uh, this uh, facility, the height limit is 35 feet. We really went down in and really did our math, you know, how do we avoid making the building even a little bit higher? Uh, so we even moved the duct system, the HVAC duct is not on the ceiling, they're actually coming from the walls. So that uh, avoids uh, increasing the height another foot. So that we can, uh, you know, another feet of height we can be sa that can be saved. Um, even the how we uh, decided to mount the solar panel onto the roof system, we're very considerate of, of that. So our goal is to stay within uh, 32 feet max, uh, but possibly even less um, of the overall height on the gymnasium side. But the um, community center is uh, lower in height. Uh, that's about 17 feet. So together, uh, we really tried very hard to make it make the facility look like uh, something that belongs in this community. Of course, um, it is um, the scale of what it is, but we really try to break down the scale with all these finishes, all this uh, breaking of you know various textures coming together. So I'll hand hand over for the first. Thank question. you, Zara. Sure. Yeah, for the as far as the first question and. Uh, I'll, I'll go back in history. As we said, this is a Proposition K project. It's funded by the Proposition K program, which was an assessment that the residents of the city of Los Angeles and property owners voted on in 97 and became enacted in 98. Uh, this project was specified in that ballot measure because this was a substandard gymnasium. It doesn't serve the needs of the community or the department. And we were directed to design and construct a facility that meets the needs of the department, which is for a full-size gymnasium. As Zora said earlier, we've done everything we can to move the building back a little further to really try and design it so it fits into the community as best as possible. It's similar or in fact smaller than some of the recent gyms we've built at other parks that are similar sized parks. We've really tried to listen to what happened in your comments at the first two community meetings that you didn't want a monstrosity, you didn't want a gigantic building here, that you want something that fit into your community. And we've tried our best and Zora and her team have really done a yeoman's job of doing that. Uh, I think one of the earlier questions was about the budget, so I will address that at the same time, uh, but to, only to an extent. Just so you know, the LVNOC 
official capacity is the design of the project, not really the budget. But what I will say is we do have a shortfall. We know we have a shortfall at this time. When Proposition K was enacted, the legislation around Proposition K specifically identified the fact that these projects would be funded by Proposition K and other various funds. So we're working with the council office and the Department of Recreation and Parks and the city administrative officer who's the chairperson for the Proposition K Oversight Committee called the LA for Kids Steering Committee to identify additional funds to fully fund the project. We're also working with the design team and eventually I'll be one of the ones who has to sort of be the mean guy and say no we can't afford that, we can't afford that if that becomes necessary. But our hope is that we can work with the council office and all the folks I told you about and come up with the additional money as soon as possible. Thank you. So the uh, next were there question, any other questions on that? Um, any question sheet? Okay. Next question is from Linda Maytoff. Um, location of trash pickup is the co-op in the same location and figurations before. How high is the gym? Um, okay, let's go. Can we go? I don't want to inundate the arts. Could you just do one question or two questions at a time? Well, it's all on the same page. Sure. No, I, I know, um, but it, I, I want to be able to. So location of trash pickup. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. I'll get started, but Rick Fisher uh, explains it much more elegantly. Uh, right now, we have proposed uh, the trash pickup in this area. However, um, there are alternative uh, discussion that has happened that because you have an existing driveway happening here, we are able to locate that uh, possibly uh, in alternative uh, location. Um, but so, you're, so you're aware it's been moved from where you put it? Um, if you want I mean, no, it, was, it was moved by Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, where it was from. So we will so, make that um, make that uh, correction and okay. change. Yes. Uh, it was moved uh, before. It was where it is now for several years, and Park and Rec made a determination that that was not an appropriate place for it, and so they have gone to a non-specific place, and they're making pickups from the individual trash containers. So if you're going to move it over there, I would suspect that Park and Rex will be okay with it. I don't know if I need to use the microphone or not, but um, one of the possible permutations that we're running into is that the city planning department requires us to have a physical location for it where we can't get planning approval. So even though Rec and Parks is happy to not to have one, unfortunately the planning department might force us to have one. Um, and in order to make it logistically feasible for trash trucks and whatever, um, there aren't too many places that work. So we'll work with park staff. And if there's another option, oh, somebody moved this again. If there's an opportunity to locate it on this street edge, we'll, we'll look at that. But uh, there are also limitations here. We've got existing basketball courts. We don't want it uh, impact. Um, again, it's designed so it has to be really easy for the access for the big trucks and things. So. Um, this right now is the only place where it, it easily meets those criteria. Un unfortunately, it became the neighborhood and local trash dump. Right. And that is... The good news is the, the uh, among the other requirements that the planning department has is that it has to have locked gate front doors and whatnot. So It didn't, it didn't matter. So you're talking about a central trash collection point even though we're still going to have trash receptacles throughout the park that's sort of the like i said the they require us to have two some central okay they been things but we might be able to convince them that American parks can do without it we'll have to okay. so there were additional questions i know on the same so this question is from karen moskowitz uh well, did we answer all the questions on the prior yes so, did we get everything? The, height. the height has been answered uh yeah. it's less than 35 feet um there was yeah. one question about what are the, some of the community amenities Yes, the co-op uh, will remain in the same location where it is correct currently. Uh, just to add uh, to the previous question was the, uh, some of the community amenities. This uh, new facility will have a full-size kitchen and it's designed in a way so it's easy to have class, classes, uh, you know, um, cooking classes. 
that's something uh, the rec director uh, emphasized that this uh, community really likes uh, uh, cooking classes and such. So, and it's designed in a way that it opens up to plaza in certain times. Um, you know, the kitchen can open up to the community room, and you can have really large gathering of, of folks having a class. That's um, that's a large um, class uh, uh, setup. So um, that's one of the com amenities. The community rooms themselves are dividable into um, three different spaces. One of that room will have uh, um, a glass on the wall for possible ballet classes that can be offered. Um, and uh, you know, I, and the rest of the facility is designed very, uh, very uh, as a flexible space. So even the, gym the gymnasium can really host large events uh, for the community if you would like. What's the seating capacity in the gym? Is there like a maximum occupancy in there? Maximum occupancy there. There is for the um, A occupancy. I have to actually look at my calculations, but there is a occupancy uh, list. Do you have those with you? Or? I don't have it. No. Okay. Can, if, 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 you yeah, if you can give Zora your information, yes. she can get that to you. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. Some of these questions, we don't answer them right now. We'll answer them yeah. when we do the meeting minutes, because we'll type out all the questions yeah. and then put the answers in them like we did previous meeting minutes. If you notice that, yeah. we had questions and answers in the meeting minutes. Could we get those meeting minutes sooner, next time, rather than just a like the flight minute. Right? Well, I, I have to let you, uh, for the meeting minute, usually we have it posted on the website. And this is uh, the uh, the hard copy that I hand out to you guys today. It's basically from the uh, website. We just well, we'll, okay. post the uh, uh, we'll, we'll okay. after this meeting, we'll notify everyone yeah, okay. as soon as possible that the meeting minutes are available and where they, uh, are. Where they are located. Yeah, yeah, we'll get that to you. As long as, again, as long as you signed up on the sign up sheet and provide your contact info. So, question from Karen. Rye Street and Park are already overcrowded. Has the city done a traffic and environmental impact report? Second. Look, you'll have a well, Currently, uh, I'm working with, the, uh, with our in-house environmental group to go through the environmental process. And they will make the, uh, you know, and then based on the requirement, we will have uh, the document whether or not it's just a CEQA event or an MND or an EIR, they will that mean. Can you go through that process? Sure. Let me go, let me go through that. So what, what's happening right now is now that we have at least of enough of a design that the environmental folks can actually honestly and fairly evaluate the project, we know the general size, location, all that, their work on it. Uh, the first step they do is an in-house analysis of the site, is there any histor uh, historical uh, or other significant environmental concerns. They will do a preliminary noise analysis, a traffic analysis, uh, usage analysis, meaning the existing usage versus the anticipated future usage, and from that determine what the various potential environmental impacts. They go through something called an initial study checklist that has a series of about 40 different areas, does this project have the potential to create noise, traffic, historic, or air quality, or whatever the various impact areas are. If there are any areas that are determined to be potential impacts, they would go then and potentially do a noise study, a traffic study, whatever the required study to determine is that impact significant or not. If it's termed to be significant or potentially significant, then at a minimum we would need to do a neg deck, a negative declaration, or a mitigated neg deck to determine what the appropriate mitigation measures are. That goes through a separate public process at the time that we make that determination. If it's determined after all those study that there's no impacts from the project that are significant or potentially significant, then as Sean said, they might be able to issue what's called a categorical exemption. And that basically means that the project has no significant impacts that weren't already part of the project proponents mitigation or that it fits into what the state has determined and there's a list of literally probably 100 different areas of project types that are categorically exempt. So minor changes, minor structural you know, changes to an existing facility, uh, addition of less than X amount of square feet of new space to an existing facility, those type of things. But that's, as Sean said, will all be done by our, our environmental management group. As soon as they complete that, the next step they do is they will notify us if it becomes a NEGDEC, mitigate NEGDEC or EIR, we will work with them to start a community process, the environmental process, specifically for that environmental document. 
whatever that requires. So we should know that probably in the next month and a half to two months. So there is no public input prior to that? Prior to that, there's no input on the environmental document. That's a city action until it's determined what the actual environmental impact is, and then we decide whether to go out, you know, based on all our analysis with the next step. Thank you. Um, Julie Rowland, do you want to come up and ask your question? No, you can go ahead and you do. Okay. Is the building going to be extreme modern? instead of a beautiful traditional one that is warm looking and inviting um, overall language is modern but it's not um it's it's kind of a contemporary style you see the overhangs um, and the heights are done in a way so that um, it is various uh, volumes coming together so uh, a sense of you know it, it does have a sense of a residential building with you know having uh, you know in a residential uh, typical building where you have a gabled roof coming and joining with another portion so it does have this intersection happening that's that that's kind of um, uh, resembles a residential um, uh, uh, configuration. However, uh, the facility, it is a much larger facility and the heights are different. However, we have tried our best to soften the building. It was very important that the uh, the look of the building and the feel of the building is softened. Uh, and uh, one of the concepts that uh, Rick Fisher also mentioned is that we um, uh, treated this uh, building and the plaza in a way, it's kind of a campus within the site, you know. So it, uh, the, the trees that are lined up, uh, so by the time you reach the building, the lawn that you have to pass in order to get to the building, and the plaza that you have to experience before you enter the building, all of this together is supposed to soften uh, how the building comes and meets you as, as a person. And, and the materiality, if you look at it, it feels modern, however, it's very softened. You know, if you look at the renderings, I hope um, it makes sense to you that um, they're meant to be, um, it is a commercial building, therefore uh, the approach is commercial. However, uh, it's a very soft, softer uh, approach that we have tried to, um, tried to do. Um, we uh, were suggested by our director to, for the two of us went over to see the one at the Delano Park. And that's a modernistic one, and it just turned us off. It was so cold. And I, I, I think uh, the red rings are here to speak for themselves, so I want to actually honestly hear your uh, opinion on what do you feel um, the build facility, the design is, because Delano is very different from this. Yeah, that's so. what I was going to say. So I was involved with the design and construction of Delano, and it's very different. It's a much more modern, to some extent whimsical, uh, the community wants something very unique to that community because they were stuck between a lot of industrial facilities behind it there's a sanitation uh, transfer facility waste transfer facility there's the Costco right next door and they want something that was truly modern truly visible and truly unique to that community and they at the community meetings there they like you know some of the round windows and the things we have on the Delano building were specifically requested by that community. They wanted to be open, they wanted to be visible. There's, it's a high crime area, unfortunately, as well. And so they want a lot of light, a lot of openness, and that's why the facility was done that way. It, it was intended that it be the focal point of the park. So when you go to Delano, you see the building and you see it from the parking lot, you see it from the street. If you reach over and I did that, I climb on my vehicle and look from Costco, you can see it. Here, because of the setback and the way it's designed, it's actually the opposite. You try and push it back a little and make the plaza and some of the other things that surround the building the focal point. And yes, it is a little bit, you know, certainly more modern than the building we have here today, but it's not like Delano where it's a really modern, very visible building. I think we've tried to do it a little bit different. But the existing trees really are the focus. Yeah. What uh, Rick Fisher said, the existing trees are really um, where our focus, you know, to how how does this plaza, this building um, kind of showcase that. So, yeah, well, I hope, yeah, the trees will soften it because uh, this is more of a traditional area. Yeah, and we'll take that into account again. And, and there's a lot of refinement still left before these are final plans. So we have a, you know, a long ways to go, and I know Zora and her team will definitely take that into consideration. So, um, Maeve? Yes. 
You want to come up and ask your question? So why, why don't we just read it? Go ahead and read it. Well, it says there's a note on it. Um, uh, can you grab that? What too? is the, what? Oh, right. Is the this is a big building. Kind of at the end of the year, uh, hopefully, it's going to be uh, environmentally neutral, no grain from the uh, utility company. Do we know what the current costs are to run this building as far as utilities? And if that then goes down to zero, that those funds that currently go to pay those bills every month and every year, can we recoup those funds and put them into something else? Let me answer the, the second question, then I'll ask Zoranta. We can't answer the second question. That has nothing to do with the Bureau of Engineering and even Recreation and Parks staff here at the park would not be able to answer that. That's really a question for Recreation and Parks Management. We will take that question back to them and try and answer it. But as far as what happens with the money, the cost savings, we, we definitely don't get to spend it. I know the park won't get to spend it directly. Whether or not it will eventually come back to the park, that's a, really a question for Recreation and Parks Management and the City Administrative Office. So we will try and get that answer. I, I don't know if we'll get a true perfect answer for that right away, to be honest. And as, let as, a, as a flagship lead mm -hmm. property, for the government in this area, if I'm understanding you correctly. Not flag, net zero. We, net we have many lead buildings and facilities. It'll be lead as well, but it's really the net zero that is the co true cost savings that you'll see. And have, are, do any of the suppliers, your construction suppliers for this project, are any of them interested in giving discounts or donating as a part of being able to market themselves as being involved with this project? We so haven't, that we all save the money? Yeah, we, we haven't gone out to bid yet, so we have no idea the okay. answer to that. We will probably not to go we'll not be able to really answer that till we're ready to go out to bid, which is when design is complete, all the construction permits have been obtained. And then we go out, but, but generally, to be honest, they may, and we try and go to all of the suppliers, we try and go to all the contractors and subcontractors on a larger project like this. In fact, all of our projects, we make phone calls, we have pre-bid meetings where we try and bring all the contractors in, we try and get them interested. I'll be honest, seldom do we get discounts where the government, we can't ask formally for a discount, that would be illegal, I would not be allowed to do that. Uh, but certainly if a supplier wants to provide free low cost reduced cost you know we'll accept it but we do a single bid so it's a sealed bid at the end of the day so we have one general contractor who will ultimately bid the entire facility we may get three bids we might get 10 bids we might get 20 bids that you know come in in a range of numbers generally we have to take the lowest what they call responsible and responsive bidder well, you know, and, and it's whoever it ends up being, as long as they're licensed, they have all the proper qualifications, and they fill in all the forms correctly, and they're the lowest bidder at the end of the day, they generally get the project. Okay. okay. And then I'll let Zora okay. on to the other question. So, um, all this, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did, uh, you I, have I, I, did we answer all the questions? Or, oh, um, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, this is from uh, DJ Jenkins. I think it's a comment, not a question. He says, uh, in favor of the plan in light of five years' experience using the park. Good. <laughs> Got all the questions? Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you have it? Yeah, for the card. Do you have it? Well, I put it in the card. You can just ask the question. Yeah. No, actually, can you fill out a card real quick? Or I'll get out the public comment moment. Yeah, it's just a public comment. Yes. And if there's anyone else who has any comments, please get your cards in now. I think is that the last one? Yeah. So uh, first of all, I'd like to say, where's the appropriate spot to stand? Is this fine? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say a thank you to the city staff for the work. Uh, you want me to use the microphone? Please. Sure. Um, I do appreciate the time and the effort, but I, I have some concerns about um, the size of the gymnasium. Uh, I must tell you, uh, it, one of the speakers or from the public mentioned the modern style. I like modern, but I feel that the large glass window kind of a feeling at the atrium or the entrance uh, does not fit uh, in the community, to be honest. So there's a, in Studio City, uh, I don't know if it's happening all over the city, but in Studio City we have an issue called McMansionization, 
this feels like we're taking our nice small recreation center and slightly McMansionizing it a bit. And I think that the element that is most uh, noticeably out of step is the height of the basketball court, to my eye. Uh, it just seems enormous, to be honest. And 35 feet is double what we're in right now. So you just have to imagine. And I think they did a good job of taking pictures of it from a distance so it looks kind of lower and having the model be so wide out that you know none of the big trees are next to it, so you can't quite tell. But um, that's a concern. And the other concern is, is that a commercial building in a neighborhood is strange. And I don't think we want to build. We have the neighbors who, uh, if they were noticed more about this, you'd see a lot of people in the area out here, I think, uh, concerned about more people. Great. No, I mean, and half the people are going to love it, half the people are going to not love it. You know, I, I can't speak for, I can only speak for myself. But we have parking issues uh, up the kazoo. To not increase the parking is appropriate, but to increase the size and the functionality is a, is a concern. Um, and I thought that, you know, there's up to three LV knocks are what are required for this project, as uh, Mr. Drucker will confirm. But the LV knock, and I'm going to address you here for a minute, you can extend the LV knock. That is something that is your purview. And that would allow the community to have have a little more outreach about this and kind of pick at some of the details that I thought were brought up by the public. So your action today, which is the last thing on your agenda, could be let's have a couple more meetings because to be fair, it has been 591 days since the second LV knock, which is a very long time. And I think a lot of people are not really aware of where we are. And frankly, a shortfall uh, is a concern. And to be moving forward with net zero, people need to understand I am very green. I think we all are because the environment is so important. But net zero is like getting a Tesla in 2017 or 19 or 20 if we're lucky. So I don't know that we should be piling on. I'm sorry? 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, I think that that may be um, a component that maybe if we jiggered some of the scale and sizing, I'm also just concerned that this was a great park for. Uh, children and youth, that's sort of the way it has, you know, across the district. People tend to play a lot of basketball over at the um, Weddington, is it called? Yeah, Weddington. And, you know, they have a great program. And, you know, we have a good program, and it's a decent program. And I don't have a problem. My kids never had a problem being canceled on. But I, I understand the desire for that. But we have a great outdoor facility for basketball. And so I would just ask that the LV not, in my final 10 seconds, um, consider ha adding a few LV not meetings. Uh, which is your purview. You could say we just want to get some of the answers from the city staff and move forward once everybody's on the same page, if that's how we feel, and we can get the money. So thank you uh, for all your hard work, and I look forward to uh, more LVNOC meetings. Uh, and uh, we will get the Neighborhood Council next time to send out a blast. And SCRA, I know you must have sent one out in the last 24 or 48 hours, but it wasn't posted on the website, so we have to do better outreach for the city of LA. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, just to let everyone know, and, and I uh, talked to Paul uh, before as the president of the LVNOC, the LVNOC does have the ability to decide if they want another meeting. It would be one meeting that would be voted on tonight, and then another wouldn't be voting on two or three more LVNOCs. Uh, it would be if they wanted to vote on one more LVNOC. As far as the gym height, as Zora said, uh, we've really done our best to actually minimize that height versus other similar sized gyms and similar sized parks. Uh, this is a substandard height gym. This is not even considered under our current definition a gymnasium. It would not be allowed to be built today on any recreation parks facility and have basketball courts officially. So we, we, we've designed the new building to meet the needs of recreation parks to run actual basketball programs out of this park. So, so that's really the goal of this. And to be honest, as I said right a couple of questions ago, the Proposition K ballot measure specifically identified this project as one of 180 some odd projects that were specified for a modern gymnasium or other similar types of amenities. So it was something that was specified. As far as the height, I'll let yes. Zora sure. answer a little bit I more just about that. I add a little more clarification on the height. Uh, uh, for a uh, full-size basketball court, the minimum height requirement for the ball is 25 feet. So we have to have a um, minimum clearance of 25 feet. So above that is lighting system, above that is structural system, above that is roof and, uh, and, and such. So the whole roof assembly and the lighting system, uh, that takes up a lot of space. We work really hard um, uh, you know, to minimize the depth of the beams so we do not go high. Um, so we, we are really working hard 
to um, keep that in mind um, in terms of the heights. Uh, as far as net zero, um, I appreciate your comment about that. It is Tesla, uh, we're happy to say that. However, it is not as new. Uh, this, uh, the state of law of California will require from uh, just three years from now, uh, by year 2020, any new uh, residential construction will have to be a net zero energy. So every house you build will have to have enough solar panel to feed you for one whole year of time time frame. So it is um, that's coming. It's not known as as much outside of the design community. However, it's coming. So it's a uh, and this is just a preparation for us to uh, kind of stay ahead of the curve and try out uh, things um, and make things happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zara. And now I'm going to return the speaker to Paul, who will take it from here. Thank you, Neil. You're welcome. Uh, base, first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, I know it's an effort to get out in this heat and to come to a community meeting. And I really appreciate that you're here. Uh, I'd like to ask the committee whether or not they feel we should have another meeting. Oh, I'd like to say something. Let's do this first and then yeah. make a comment. Well, that's part of it. Well, that's part of it? Yeah. Okay. You speak first and then. If you all would just take a look around this building you're sitting in, it's extremely unsafe. Mm -hmm. the, it's, I can see the door frame sagging all around. We're, we're having our children play in this building. I think we are extremely fortunate to have a new gym being proposed for this site, and I would like to move it along as quickly as possible. I think with what we've seen tonight, uh, with the changes that have been made, with EIR coming up, with the shortness of the notification of the public, that we should have another meeting. I don't think another meeting is going to stop the progress. Uh, it seems that the progress has gone along just fine over the past year since we've had our last meeting. And I'd like to move that we do have another, another one more meeting at least. Do I have a second? Well, I think you have to finish comments first, don't you? Or if you make the motion, then we have to comment. And then you can comment. Yeah, yeah. 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 Motion, and then second, second, is, then. is there a second on the motion? If there's no second, it dies. So the motion fails. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're adjourned. Uh, well, actually, well, yeah. you can't do that. Now you guys can decide whether yeah. you want to take a vote on actually approving yeah. the project as yeah. proposed. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the last I'll meeting. second it. Okay. In favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Opposed? No. No, no abstentions. Okay. And do we, what about the color? Do we need to? Yeah, there's a site action item on the project. Yeah. Where? Right here. Here. Yes. So it doesn't, it it doesn't say what it is. It doesn't say what the action item is. Yeah, it's direction. Basically, you give us direction on project, whether you endorse the project as as proposed and direct us to move forward to complete the construction documents, or you can say move forward but reconsider this or that. Can we just walk through one more time? Yeah, sure. sure. Can you take that? Of course, yeah. Relative to the new structure, I think it would help people to grasp. Yeah, yeah. Ask them. <laughs> okay. Do you have any elevations? Ten million dollar project. Yeah, we're just we're rushing. Through. Yeah, we're rushing through. There's no rush. We're still three and a half short anyway. Go on, Megan. So if you these heights are, you need to explain that to me because everyone's there. People can't visualize this. Yeah. Well, like so we talk about concentric circles. Just very quickly, and say, you know, I want you to realize that the height of these trees is rising at the trees. So you can see where that is relative, relative to the building height. I think that would help with the construction. I think there's going to be changes made as the project's being built down. I don't think we're doing our job. Well, 
I don't think we're going to be able to have info on this part of the show. Did you know? Did you have that? I totally did. Well, that's why I wanted the door. I mean, they changed it. I did. I did. That's why I wanted the door. That's why I wanted the door. Yeah, what they're saying is totally and that's the 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 with the LV knock in the next minute or two. You, I'm going to ask everyone not on the LV knock to please sit down and as quickly as possible if we can get the LV knock to sit down. I, I, have, a, I have a nice laugh voice. I don't need my yeah. <laughs> Can I have your attention? So we get back to this. I thought it was a new vision of my cabinet. I can I can I can because this is a nice blend of the colors of the trees. That's why I wanted to meet him. Yeah. At least we would see it, the other comment, before we approve it. That's what I would If I could, Rick, Rick, if I could ask everyone to sit down so the LV not can continue and then. City staff is willing to stay after and answer any specific questions you have regarding the design and things. We'll wait around after a little bit. The point is, we get to see it. So, I move to accept the design as is. I'll second that. So, you're going to make a motion. Say that again. So you're make a motion. Yes. Okay, so state it so we can have it. So can you can you repeat your motion just so everyone hears it, please? Thank you. So my motion is to accept the design in support of as to support the design as it is presented to the LV Nog. There's a sec there a second. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the motion. Yes. If I can add that we are approving the project as stated here however if for any reason they need to redesign any part of this they must come back and have another community meeting with the lv knock and community weighs in for whatever changes substantial changes to the project i accept that anymore okay did you also want to pick the callers as part of the motion there are three colors that she presented. She presented red, yellow, and green. The green, I think, would be the best choice so that it just blends in with the trees and the scheme of the park. What do you, do you have any comments? No, I you know color? you're talking colors. Colors. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that on the area. You want a second motion? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can have two <laughs> motions. Yeah, we, we can do the motion. colors as separate motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so let's people go might with the think the color is a yeah. major thing. You know, right. No, 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 it is. <laughs> but I think, yeah, okay. So let's, let's, not, let's not compound. So yeah. the motion. So the LV NOC uh, committee supports the design element as is with the friendly amendment of. Any substantial changes. To let them know that you yeah. will return to the LV NOC yes. and conduct another LV NOC meeting. Yes. Is there a second? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I am opposed. No, no. Is there a one opposition? One opposition. One opposition, yeah. Okay. So motion passes. Now we want to do motion the motion on the colors. Okay. 
And also, just so everyone knows, when we go to culture affairs and the various internal city approvals, colors do make a difference. Yeah. 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 Major thing. So here we go again. That's the right. green, and this is the red, and there's the yellow. I found your boards. And here's the yellow. Oh, you say something from that. Possibly you do. So red is out. So I'm going to take the red board. Take it right out. Okay. So I'll, I'll, okay, so I'll make the motion that we support the green as the color scheme. as the color scheme for the design of the building and subsequent uh, materials. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. <laughs> that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> now you got minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does somebody make a motion to adjourn? Well, we got to do minutes, don't we? Oh, God, I did. Did we do that already? Did you do that? I thought we did that. You want me to? I'll do it without that, Mike. I'm right. good. So what, what I'd like to do now is just thank everyone, our LVNOC members who've been very patient with us over the last few years. Uh, the community, thank you all for attending tonight. My design team and project management team who really worked a lot on this project. I know you don't see it because we don't come out every day, but I know they've spent hours and hours and really months and months on each individual aspect of this project. As you can see, Rick Fisher is our landscape architect, but he has a team that works with him. Zora has a team that works with her. So you see a small amount of the people that are really working on the project. But we all thank you. And hopefully in the very, very near future, we'll be coming back here to start demolition and start the project. We will try and keep everyone informed as much as possible through both Recreation and Parks, the council office, and the neighborhood council. And uh, the Residents Association will try and get the word out at each step. Uh, if there's any more city, either hearings, uh, we'll be going to Recreation and Parks Board, Culture Affairs, different city offices. We will try and get that on our website so that everyone knows and if anyone has interest in attending, they may. Uh, again, thank you all and uh, LVNOC members, thank you for your service. You are now formally discharged from your duties unless there are any substantial changes, <laughs> in which case we will reconvene. Thank you all.